Hi guys, this video is about um, food and cyborgism. They're going to change the food because humans are going to change. In order to have a, a working cyborg, you're going to have to have you're going to have to have a special type of food. So as we become more cyborg, the food will change because you need special food to keep a cyborg alive. So that's why the food's going to change, and there's going to be lots of things that come into the system in order to disrupt the food chains, in order to create famines, so that we have to make our own food. And in this video. I'm going to explain that. Thank you. Food and the way that food is going to change. So I've got a prophecy and my prophecy is this. The food that we eat, the natural food is going to disappear and disappear and disappear. Loads of people have got crisps, loads of people have got rubbish in their food. They eat hamburgers that are like uh, basically full of bread and chemicals. We have a very difficult ability to, to try and get fresh food or to even know what is in the food. There's GMOs, there's all sorts of stuff in the food. But why? Why is that? Well, <clears throat> the way that this system works, it works on multiple levels. It's not just one thing, it's many things. So you could say, yeah, it's to change the testosterone or it's to change the estrogen, it's to make men infertile, it's to make women uh, go through puberty is to sexualize the children more so if children go through puberty earlier therefore their bodies are changing therefore they have to deal with those changes therefore they have to learn about sex you see that going on at school you see this sort of rampant ideology being pushed into children at school about so and so which I can't mention because of YouTube and all sorts of stuff like that but we all know what we're talking about this is part of the LGBT community which of course you know, it's very good uh, for the YouTube. Um, and uh, what I want to say about in this video is that <clears throat> for me, we're going down this way because LGBT transsexual leads to transhuman and transhuman leads to posthuman. We're just starting now to talk about transhuman. I've been talking about it for like three, four years. And no one's yet talking really about post-human because people still don't understand exactly what post-human is. Post-human is when we're going to start changing into different animals. It's when we're going to start changing our DNA. It's when you actually want, when you, when you think that you're a penguin, the post-human AI will be able to turn you actually into a penguin. And there's like a lot of things that I need to say about that when the time comes, because I think that all, I think that, <clears throat> what's being spoken about then will change a lot of ideologies and a lot of laws and a lot of things like that but at the moment i want to talk about the food chain change so why do they want to change food well <clears throat> if we're going towards cyborgism the telephone is the, the the telephone is part of transhuman you become a cyborg with the telephone it's an external um, ability it's got memory in there that you don't have it's got processing power that you don't have and then they start putting the watches onto you to monitor your system, but it's all external. Now they've gone a little bit internal with these like Apple ear pods. So it's sort of external, but it's sort of penetrating into the body. Then you've got Neuralink, which is actually going deep in. Then they've got things like uh, injections, which are penetrating the body. And then with injections, you can put other things onto it as well in order to monitor the body. So what's going on outside the body, you can now put into a chip and put it inside the body. But why food? Why is food so important? Why do they want to regulate food? Why do they want scarcity of food? Why do they want control all over the food? And my belief is, is because if you're going to change people into cyborgs, into, into the transhuman, the food that you eat, is it viable for the human body? Is, is the human, if the human body has a lot of things inside of it, different foreign agents, foreign bodies and things like that, is the body able to withstand that, to hold it, to keep it. And if you've got electricity and other things running in the body, what does the body need in order to adjust or to help those electronic processes? So for instance, if you're gonna run electricity in the body, you might need more protein. Um, you might need more omega-3. You might need some sort of chemical to help the body uh, attach itself to these new foreign bodies, you know, metal, metallic things. And so you might need specific things in the body. So as we become more transhuman, as we become more cyborg, we become less human. And the food has to run in parallel to that. So there's, there's a massive push, a massive agenda to make humans less human. 
we as humans need to become less human. The more less human we become, the more non-human we become and we can take on non-human ideas and ideologies, etc, etc, and do non-human things more robotic things but I don't think that robotics is really where they want us to go I think robotics is part of the ladder part of the ladder to enable the post-humanism because robotics robotics isn't natural to this universe biology is natural to this universe but you can get robotics to program organic material for instance to program DNA so you might keep having different types of animals species and creatures but in order to make them, you might need artificial intelligence and technology to, to write the codes, basically the DNA. Because writing, writing computer codes is the same as writing DNA. DNA is the source, it's the blueprint of our bodies. And the matrix has its DNA, which can be interacted through magic and plant medicines. And computers have its DNA, which is source code. So what we're seeing at the moment is this idea to try and understand source code. It's to do with the matrix, it's to do with simulation. So we, from Nick Bostrom and people before, in people in the, in the uh, Prunas and the Bhagavad Gita's and the Bhagavad Jans and all of these, we've got, and the Gnostics, we've got this idea of a simulation. Yeah, even if you look at Plato and the Men in the Cave, you've always got this idea of a simulation, of a fake world, of a dimension. And so <clears throat> we, we are, we're trying to get into, we're trying to, to understand the the blueprint or the source code or the dna of these simulations and so when we get that we can then start changing things if you can change things in the body with the dna then you should be able to change reality if you manage to hack into the source code of reality and i think all these things are going on in in parallels as you get the source code of reality you're getting the source code of the human as you're getting the source code of the of the computers which is going to build build this system and help us to achieve so what i think <clears throat> what I think they want us to do, they, what I think they want us to do is they want to take organic food away from us. And this is where we're going to see synthetic foods, synthetic meats. And they say, look, uh, killing animals is wrong. Uh, animals are people. So you're getting, you're getting this like new ideology which is coming in through like LGBT. So for instance, if I'm a man, but I'm a woman, but I'm a man, but I'm a woman, but I'm a this and a that. You've got to respect them for whoever they are. Um, and part, part of this ideology is that if you build a computer far more advanced than humans, why would the computer respect us if we don't respect ourselves or respect animals? So there's this idea, there's this fear which is coming in that if we don't start respecting things around us, we will be treated according to the same laws that we treat other people. So they want us, they want us to start respecting things because we might end up in that situation where we're lesser than something else and we want our lives we want to be respected so they're going to start respecting i think animals animals uh, you know what's the point killing an animal if you can uh, grow the meat yourself if you can print the meat yourself what's the point of uh, growing uh, things in nature for instance if you have to get plants out of um, the earth and you've got to kill worms and ants you know why should why should we do that? It'd be a lot better if we could just grow it in a in a greenhouse where there are no animals that we kill. And you're sort of going into this Jainism, aren't you? You're sort of going into these philosophies of like fundamentalism, fundamentalist vegans, whereby even now getting the vegetables, you can't hurt animals. So farming will become robotic as you push people out of the cities in um, out of the countryside into the cities, which is where the jobs are going to be and the electricity. You're going to see robots going into the farms and going to make the, um, the food for us. But they really want to change the food at the DNA level. Now, food comes from the stars. What we're eating is actually star. So you've got a, a, a sun, which is a star, and through its energy and photosynthesis, the plant gets biophotons. And that turns the plant into what the plant is. And then we eat it and we get biophotons. We're basically eating energy from the sun, if you like. Now, on a metaphysical level, light is information. And so information passes to us in a myriad of different ways that we can't understand consciously. And that uh, informs our bodies and informs things around us of changes that need to be made, as far as I, I understand, as far as I'm concerned. So taking away 
that interaction between the moon, the stars, the sun, the cosmos, and then eating something which is purely made by robot, you're taking yourself away from the natural environment. Not only that, when you make something, when you make food, you put your energy into it. When you're kneading the bread, when you're chopping the vegetables, when you're stirring something, you're putting your energy into it on a metaphysical level. So if you've got a robot doing that, you see, because you see, in some areas, women on their periods aren't allowed to cook, right? Because a woman, when she goes to the period, she's, she's cleaning the body. So as she's cleaning the body, which is good, um, she's, ridding, she's ridding of the energy. The problem with men is that men have a much more difficult time cleaning their body, which is why men might be a little bit more dirty than women, right? So periods aren't bad. It's actually a natural phenomena that cleans, the, in, in a shamanic sense, that cleans the body. So if you've got a robot cooking your food, then you have this a different type of energy. You're consuming a different type of energy. And if that food has come from robot, then you're consuming that energy. And if that food has never seen light and you've got false light, then you're consuming that energy. So all of these natural energetical things that are attached to the process of food that are vertically integrated into food are now gone. We've got rid of them. And because science, science is very arrogant, because science, science doesn't want to admit that anything can exist that it can't explain. So whenever phenomena happens that it can't explain, it dismisses it because it's very arrogant because of what happened in the Enlightenment period when science and mysticism were, were, were detached, you know, and the alchemists. The alchemists were the people that managed to hold or unite both concepts together. So modern science is actually based off alchemy, but nobody will ever tell you that because it's sort of like, oh, you know, did we really come from those parents? Oh, the alchemists, you know, we don't like to talk about that type of stuff. You know, it's like having, you know, a slave owner in the family or a racist in the family. You know, great, great, great grandfather Bob, he was a racist. He kept slaves, you know, so we won't talk about that. Um, you know, great, great, great grandfather scientist. He was an alchemist. You know, we won't talk about that. You know, those funny people, even though the alchemists gave masses amounts of information and ideas, they started the chemical process of science. So we dismiss, we dismiss these people because they don't fit our criteria or ideology of what the world is anymore. They had something or they understood something or they saw something that allowed them to go along a path that opened up science. Yet now we dismiss that because we no longer think that that is part of the cosmos or the way that the world is. So science in that sense is a cult. So food, going back to food, food has on many different levels, ways of informing the body on an energetical level and on a DNA level. And so if you're putting chemicals into the food, you're changing the food to DNA, the people that are cooking and processing the food are robots. And also it doesn't have any relationship to, um, you know, the, the, the sun um, and the moon because it's kept in like false lights or however it's going to be done. done. You're, you're not really getting this like a natural relationship between you and the earth. So you can see how through the food you're being you're being cut that umbilical cord is being cut and that for me is part of the entire process it's to create food for cyborgs once they've once they've got rid of once they've got us accustomed to the coca-cola and to the crisps but on a much larger level god hope the italians never succumb to this but we'll see what happens i think that they'll start to change the food even more because once you become a cyborg, the more cyborg you become, the more metallic, the more energetical you become, electricity-based electricity I'm talking about, you become. Your source of needs, your source of um, energy, or your source of food is going to be very different. You know, will, will, does a cyborg need a banana, or does a cyborg need oil, or does it need some sort of bio oil, or some, or some sort of banana oil? So I think that they're preparing the types of food for us to consume in the future and the way that they're doing that is getting us off the natural food source to change our taste so that we no longer know what natural tastes like you know it's quite strange it's like if you eat a pizza in a third world country it doesn't taste the same as Italy once you go to Italy and you taste and you taste that pizza you can't go back it's the same with chocolate once you've tasted really 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 good chocolate you can't eat the other chocolate. Cadbury's is rubbish. All this chocolate in the supermarket is rubbish. If you produce your own chocolate, which I do, it's completely different taste. 
It's a completely different taste, you know? Same probably with meat, same probably with bread, same as all of this stuff. If you produce it with your own hands, it's got a different taste. And so once you start losing the taste, then they'll be able to push you further and further along that path. And so I think they're clamping down on food, clamping down on the farms, clamping down on, on, on uh, all of this restriction. I think they're going to have food shortages. And the reason for the food shortages, the reason for the food shortages is so that they have to develop fake food. We don't have the food. We've got natural problems. You know, so, so and so has been flooded. The sun's burnt everything. There's been no rain. So now in order to keep you alive, depend on us, the government, we're going to feed you and we're going to develop the food and make the food artificially and we will sustain you. Here's the sustenance. We will sustain you. So it's sort of like God-like. God is supposed to sustain us. God is supposed to sustain us through nature. You take that away, the government becomes the sustainer. The government becomes the God, if you like. And so we depend on that. And then you can control the people. In order, if you start eating various foods, you might get ill. Then you'll need medication. You'll depend on the government again in a different way in order to eat the correct medication in order to be able to cope with the food. But the people that become more cyborg you'll be able to eat that new food and you'll have to go further and further and further down that path, I think, until you're not eating food anymore and you become that machine or that cyborg or whatever it is. I forget what Robocop et. Maybe we should have a look at what Robocop et. Um, well, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Ah, oh, so yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna talk about food for the vegans and the vegetarians out there, a lot of respect for you. I've got a lot of respect for you. I think it's important to be uh, a vegan or a vegetarian for the right reasons. Um, the idea about killing animals is a difficult one. If you are going to kill animals, you need to kill them properly. You need to treat them properly. You need to kill them properly, and they need to have had a life as well. So, if you want to, if I think that if you want to eat meat, I think you should kill the animal. I think you should rear the animal. I think you should kill it because then you've got appreciation. You've got a respect for life. Yeah, if you're going to take life, have respect for life. It's not something you buy in a supermarket in, in plastic and then throw away. I mean, it's full of water and full of chemicals. No, if you want food, you grow it, you kill it, you understand how to kill. You enter into that contract, if you like, maybe, with God, whereby you are given permission as one of the humans on earth to, to rule over the earth. And that comes with responsibility and it comes with respect. And part of that is being able to kill animals properly. Um, so for those that don't want to kill animals, then don't eat it. And for those of you that are vegetarians and vegans, because you don't want to eat animals, not because you don't worry about killing them, but because you worry about them having a decent life, I think that's perfectly proper. I think that's everything for today. Thank you very much. Bye.